everybody. Andy here. This is Get Real with Andy, episode 34. Listen, it looks like I'm in a dungeon or something, but really I'm in the basement because today I'm here to talk about basement reality, the kind of darkness that we humans find ourselves in sometimes. I want to talk about two different kinds of darkness, the darkness of loss and despair and the darkness of actually of being so wounded that one becomes an inflictor of wounds. You know, and I can say for myself, I've not really lived a, a dark existence at all. I've been charmed. You know, my mother lived through the Holocaust while hiding in basements in Nazi-occupied Czechoslovakia during World War II. And I've experienced this secondhand. It's in my immediate family. My grandfather died in a forced labor camp. One of my uncles was murdered, shot to death in a labor camp. My other uncle was shot and seriously wounded while fighting with the resistance uh, against the Nazis. My grandfather owned a, a, a grocery store and he had an orchard and a little bit of property and a house. All that was stolen from the family by the Nazis. And then after the war, it was given to the, the Czechoslovak government. And even long after the war, when my mother applied for reparations, I still have the deed to that property. They just said, sorry, we're not doing that. And so even secondhand, I've gotten to experience a little teeny bit of that loss. But to my mother, that's like devastating. And I also, where I work, and I used to work in the hospital, I've seen people facing really devastating medical diagnoses and medical conditions. I recently worked with a woman who had a condition that was similar to ALS. And every morning when she wakes up, she doesn't know how further debilitated she is going to be that day. And only very recently, she actually lost the ability to speak. And even while I've got to see her and be with her, for a while she was walking and then within uh, actually just a few days she was riding around in a scooter because she couldn't walk so steadily anymore. And she seemed to be in really good spirits and always had a smile on her face. And, w and strangely enough and wonderfully enough, she actually volunteered to take her turn in the healing circle. And I thought to myself, how is somebody who's not able to speak gonna take their turn? So she communicated through gestures, but she also had her smartphone. It did like a Stephen Hawking kind of communication where she would type something in and then play the, the verbal part to us. But I tell you, a big part of her sharing was crying. She was just crying and we cried with her because those of us who had seen her even for a few days, we got to see how she was going down. You know, we we're very hopeful that the program there was going to help her at least stop the decline or slow it down or something positive. But we got to see that she was she was suffering in, in the midst of a daily loss. And, you know, I think even in the circle, some people refer to her as brave. And we... We do that with people with disabilities and who, people who are facing difficult diagnoses. We say they're brave. And I don't think she would say she was brave. I don't know what she would say, but I think she really also welcomed the opportunity to be real with us. And for her, being real meant crying. Just And we created and held the space for her to really be with her grieving and, and her sadness. And then, you know, in that same time period, it's not like, oh, we're all bummed out. No, she found a way, even non-verbally, to do something silly, to, to make us laugh. And she would put some words in and, and it would be spoken for her, something that was, that was goofy and off the wall. And so I could see, and we could all see, that even in the midst of this dark state, she had not lost her personhood, you know? That may not be brave, although brave is an appropriate word, but it's definitely inspiring. It's so inspiring. 
And, you know, my mother also, she didn't lose her personhood. She's a spunky, resourceful person and woman. And she told me some stories, I tell you. I don't know if I would have had it in me. But I was proud to be in her lineage just to hear how she survived and made survival choices even in the face of grave imminent danger just amazing and so we're faced with darkness and as a therapist i get to work with people who are actively suicidal i've committed one or two people i've helped people commit themselves because they were scared for their own safety you know that's a dark place when death seems like a viable option to the level of suffering so we have a great capacity for darkness, but we also have this incredible capacity for, for depth and love and inspiration. I do choose to believe, and I do believe, that darkness is simply the absence of light, that darkness has no substance of its own, and that the antidote is light. Consciousness is the cure. When it, whenever we create a space for somebody in the healing circle to actually just feel what they're actually feeling, it runs its course. That resisting the feelings actually sometimes and more than often than not drags them out. When there's space to sink into the depths of despair, that's when the opportunity really arises for the light to appear somehow miraculously it's a magical process, and I'm so fortunate to be part of it. I invite you to be part of that process within yourself and to get involved with the people in your life in a way that you never have before, where you make room. It, it isn't this cheery face thing. You know, put on a happy face, fake it till you make it. Ugh. I much rather prefer real tears over a fake smile. Don't you? I mean, come on. All right. Get real, get well, even, even in the basement. Okay. Love you. Till next time.